Welcome to Time to Study Together. We study uh, to show ourselves approved unto God. And it's going to be a wonderful moment today because we are going to take, take a subject that is very, very important, a topic that is very, very important that has caused confusion in the church and the body of Christ at large. And I want us to deal with this decisively today. And this topic is very simple. If you remember, the Bible says that in chapter 1 of the Gospel of John that the law came by Moses and Jesus brought grace and truth. In fact, I want us to read it in the Bible. Look at it. It says, verse 17, For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So we are going to look at something very important today. And what is that? This is the topic. Is church under Moses' law. Is the church under Moses' law. Uh, that is very important because the Bible says the law came through Moses, but grace and truth came through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, we have the law that Moses was given by God on Mount Sinai, and there was a binding rule upon the house of Israel, and they lived by that law until Jesus came. When Jesus came, he also ministered under that law, and he went to the temple in Jerusalem, and he ministered. But by his coming, his death, burial, and resurrection, has anything been affected? Are, 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 are we, now that we are born again believers, are we reformed Jews? Are we what we call convert of Jewish system of law? Are we back under the law of Moses? It was a big deal in the early church. And I got a news for you. The early church tackled this problem headlong. Are they going to keep on being under the law of Moses? Oh, of course they will read the scriptures they will learn from it. They will see Jesus, the messianic promises and prophecies from the Old Testament, both the law and the prophet, and the, the, the writings, like the Psalms and Co, and the wisdom proverbs. Uh, and, but are they going to go back and live by all those ceremonial laws and all those code of conduct by Moses? Are we really under the law of Moses? I, I, I submit to you that we have never really studied this thing thoroughly well, because the early church all the apostles came together and wrote their first letter based upon this matter. Can you imagine? So the first epistle was not actually Romans or Corinthians or whatever. The first epistle was written in the book of Acts by all the apostles. All the apostles were there, the church in Jerusalem, James, the apostle was there, the, the, the brother of our Lord Jesus Christ, and Barnabas and Paul, they were all there. So let's delve into this truth today. We're going to look at uh, what the Bible says, and we're going to understand it in a better way. Because if you don't understand it, we're going to have a lot of problems perpetually. So let's go and study this thing. Let's go to Act 15. In fact, Act 15, from is it going to be a lengthy passage. We're going to discuss it together, and we're going to look at it together and walk through with it. Is the church under the law of Moses? Let's look at what happened when the law, uh, when the law was mentioned and this controversy came up. You know, the early church, they were all Jews, and they came out of, you know, Jewish uh, life. When Jesus came to them, they were still Jews, and they began to preach the gospel, and then the non-Jews began to get saved. It went as far as Antioch, and they began to get born again. They began to walk with the Lord and receive the Holy Spirit. But then the trouble occurred by this in Acts 15. Take a look. Let's read it. Acts 15 from verse 31, we just read. And certain men came down from Judea and taught the brethren. Take, take a look. Unless you are circumcised, according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. Oh. So these Jewish people came, they were teachers or preachers, and they began to say to the church that except you are circumcised. These are non-Jews, people like us. Except you are circumcised, you cannot be saved and you follow the custom of Moses. And so let's keep reading. You know, so the Bible says, Therefore, when Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and dispute with them, they determined that, they, that Paul and Barnabas, certain others of them, should go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and elders about this question. Wow. So the question is, should we be circumcised, get back under the law of Moses, as those who are not Jews, who are getting born again, that's the rest of the world today, outside Israel. 
that includes you and me, do we need to get back under the law of Moses and start living the law of Moses and get circumcised? Because really, to enter into the law of Moses, you get circumcised first, and then you can keep all the other laws that were there, different kinds of the dress code, offering code, you know, praying code, all kinds of things were under the law of Moses. You can see them in uh, Numbers, Leviticus, and Exodus, and uh, the book of Deuteronomy, the, a lot of things were spoken there that were particularly and germane to the law of Moses as per the Jewish people. So let's keep reading. So the early church, when Paul and Barnabas began to argue with them, don't forget that Paul was a former Pharisee who was a stickler to the law of Moses, but he had come to see the revelation of Jesus Christ and he came to see that you just can't live under the law of Moses as non-Jews and claim to be saved. But there was this argument in Church of Antioch. So they said, let's go to the uh, 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 the church that was the headquarter church at that time. That was Jerusalem, where everything began. So they now went to Jerusalem. Let's keep reading. And then, listen. And so being sent on their way by the church, they passed through Phoenicia and Samaria, describing the conversion of the Gentiles. Those are the non-Jews. And they caused great joy to all the brethren. So people were getting born again. And these were Gentiles, were people like us, non-Jews. And listen, and when they had come to Jerusalem, they were received by the church and the apostles and the elders. And they reported all things that God had done with them. Now, interesting. So after telling them, they brought up the matter. Let's look at what happened next. This is important for us all to see. Because if you don't see it, we get confused about this matter. So what happened when they got to Jerusalem? Let's take a look. And we're going to read it in the next few minutes. Look at it. It says, but the, some of the sect of the Pharisees who believed, were, they rose up saying, listen, it is necessary to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. Oh, oh did you see that? The, this sect, they, they, were, they were believers, but they were Pharisees. You see, this kind of set me thinking that, you know, they were Pharisees before they got to believe. But they were still Pharisaic kind of thinking. Because the Pharisees believed that they were called Pharisees, which means dedicated. They were given to the law of Moses to see that they keep themselves and make people to keep them. So when they now got born again, they came to Christ and they joined the church. They began to think that the same thing goes, that we should tell all the non-Jews who are not Jews, who are getting born again and saved, people like us, should be made to keep the law of Moses. Let's read it again. It says, this, the rose of saying it is necessary to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. See, this is a problem today. See, the Pharisees, they didn't lose their mind. They didn't lose their thought and ideology. Many of us, we carry our ideologies of Christianity, what we have believed, what we have learned before, and that kind of impedes and hinders the church a lot. When you see any preacher, any minister, you need to look at his background. Is it reflecting, is it reflecting on his teaching and his preaching? That's vitally important. The Pharisees were believers. Now. They, believe, they became believers, but they were still thinking like Pharisee. That's why we have to renew our mind and get our mind to be saved and walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to walk on our mind and receive new thoughts from the Word of God, the thought of faith and grace. But this early church, these Pharisees, they were working more with what they've known all along before. Stick out to the law of Moses. Remember, Jesus had struggled with them when he was here on earth, and he, 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 they were just always opposing him. But they wanted to start getting born again and getting, you know, to become Christians and become part of the church. So they said, I'm emphasizing that you must keep the law of Moses. But let's 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 go back and read what the early church do. Now look at it. Now the apostles and elders came together to consider this matter. So all the apostles, Barnabas, Paul, James, and John, and Peter, all of them. Atulome, Thomas, all of them came together. Plus the elders of the early church, including James, the beloved brother of the Lord Jesus Christ. And they began to discuss. Now let's look at what happened. And when there had been much dispute, oh, so they argued too. They disputed too. They had a lot of discussion over this matter. Then what happened? Peter, who seemed to be the number one apostle, you know, rose up and said to them, men and brethren, you know that a good while ago, God chose among us that by my mouth, the Gentiles should hear the word of the gospel and believe. Now, you can see Peter rose up. Remember, Peter was the first one that was on, on a particular town, I think it was Joppa, one of those places, and he had a vision of heaven open, and he saw this sheet of uh, cloth that he saw all kinds of animals, and God said, rise up, kill her. Peter, and eat, and he said, not too, Lord. The Lord said, what I've made 
clean, don't make, don't call on common, don't call common. So that's how Cornelius was born again. So Cornelius was not a Jew, was a Gentile, a non-Jew, and he got saved. So Peter got up and talked about that experience. Let's hear further. So now listen to this. Let's go through it again. Let's go. From, this is what he said. Verse. Uh, let's look at verse. Uh, let's start from verse. Uh, uh, 17. And when there had been much dispute, Peter rose up and said to the men and brethren, you know that a good while ago, God chose among us that by my mouth, the Gentiles should hear the word of the gospel and believe. So God, who knows the heart, acknowledged them by giving them the Holy Spirit, because as he did to us, now listen to this, and he made no distinction between us and them, purifying their heart by faith. Okay. Oh, fantastic. You need to get this very clear. He said, the sign that we know that God has accepted people is by them receiving the Holy Spirit. He said, they received the Holy Spirit. Remember, in the house of Cornelius, while he was preaching, talking about the forgiveness of Jesus, as he got to the forgiveness of Jesus, the Holy Ghost came upon them, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit, and they started speaking in tongues. They were shocked, because just the same way they happened to the Pentecost, it happened in the house of Cornelius. And, and they got saved. And Peter began to comment on that. I said, they got saved. And he said something else. Listen, he said, listen, I, I love this. God, verse 9, and God made no distinction between us and them, purifying their heart by faith. Aha. Uh -huh. You see that word purifying? That's what the Lord was about, is to purify people and cleanse them. But now, he's saying that when you get saved, when you come to Christ, the faith that you have, not circumcision, not keeping the Lord Moses, purify your heart. So every person who has come to Christ and believe on him, that belief in that faith purified his heart. Wow. It made him clean before God. Let's go back and read some more. Now, verse 10. Why, why do you test God by putting a yoke on the neck of the disciples which neither our father nor we were able to bear? Oh, wonderful. He called the law of Moses a yoke. Did you hear that? He called the law of Moses a yoke that they themselves as Jews could not bear. It was difficult and tough for them. Then he said, he said don't put it back on those who are becoming born again as non-Jews who are not Jews. Let's go back and read it again. Take a look. Take a look. Look, look at verse 10. Now, therefore, why do you test God by putting a yoke on the neck of the disciples which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? But we believe, what do we believe? That through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved in the same way manner as they. So that's a common denominator now that you're saved by grace. You are saved by grace. Just like the Jews, there was no difference anymore. And there's still no difference. That you get saved by grace. Just like anybody else. It's not by keeping the law of Moses that you get saved. Peter made that clear on the day of that discussion. And I want you to see that clearly. Let's go back and read some more. So what did they do? Let's go back. Now verse 12. Then all the multitude kept silent and listened to Barnabas and Paul, declaring how many miracles and wonders God had walked through them among the Gentiles. God was working miracles among them. They were not keeping the Lord Moses. They were not circumcised. Let's keep reading. And after they had become silent, now James, who used to be like the leader of the church, got up and says, Men and brethren, listen to me. Simon has declared how God at the first visited the Gentiles. So take out of them a people for his name. So we now that are Gentiles who are non-Jews, God are taking us. God is still taking out of the Gentiles world. Those who are going to be for his name. So we are for his name. Let's keep reading. And with these words, a prophet agrees, just as it's written. After this, I will return and rebuild the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down. I will rebuild this ruin, set it up, so that the rest of the man can may seek the Lord. Even all the Gentiles who are called by my name, says the Lord who does all these things, known to God from eternity are all his work. Now, see, so this is what they discuss. All of them started come to agreement. Now, this man began to summarize what they're going to do as the church. That's all the apostles and elders. This is really the first time they're going to come to an agreement about should the church be all I love Moses or not. Let's read. Go back in there. Now, verse 19. Therefore, I judge that we should not trouble those who from among the Gentiles who are turning to God. Oh, this will not trouble us. Why? But that we write to them to abstain from things protected from by idols, from sexual immorality, from things strangled, and from blood. Take a look again. He said, we should not bog them. We should not, you know, burden them. We should not trouble them. 
I said over there. But they should abstain from certain things. What are these? He said, idols, immoralities, things strangled, and from blood. Let's keep reading. So what they agree on, verse 21, for Moses has had throughout many generations, those who preach him in every city, being read in the synagogue every Sabbath. Okay, so he said, let's confine Moses' preaching. The Lord Moses being preached in the synagogues. These are new people. These are Christians now. These are born again believers who are not Jews. We should not take them to put them in the synagogues. They should be living under the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. They were saved by that grace. And that faith they had in Jesus purified them. Okay, let's keep reading. What did, what did they finally agree? Let's read them. Then it pleased the apostles and elders with the old church to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, namely Judas, who was also named Barsabbas and Salas, leading them, leading men among the brethren. Now, this they wrote this letter by them. So this is the first epistle of the whole church synod. <laughs> I'm going to say this is the old church council. This is the headquarter church writing about what they should do about the law of Moses. Did you get my point? This is the first letter. Not Romans, not Corinthians, not any other book. Tell us or anything. This is the first letter written not by one apostle or the other, not by Paul or Peter or James, or, written by all of them put together. This is what they wrote. Let's read it. And they wrote this letter by them, the apostles, the elders, and the brethren. To the brethren who have the Gentiles in Antioch, Syria, and Cilicia, greetings. Since we have heard that some who went out from us have troubled you with words unsettling your soul that say she must be circumcised and keep the law to which, to whom we gave no such commandment. Whoa. Take a look. The early church, the apostles never gave any teacher, any prophet, any apostle the authority to start keep, telling to keep the law of Moses. Anybody who is telling us to keep the law of Moses and follow the law of Moses is in error today. He said, they are troubling your soul. Don't let anyone trouble your soul. You are not under the law of Moses. Of course, we can learn from the law of Moses. We can reflect on the law of Moses, but we are not under that jurisdiction. We are now saved by grace, and God has purified our heart by faith. Let's keep reading this thing. He said, to whom we give no such commandment. Now listen now, let's go. It seemed good to us, that's all of them now, being assembled with one accord to send chosen men to you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, men who have risked their lives for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have therefore sent Judas and Silas who will also report the same things by word of mouth. For it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us, the entire church, apostles, elders, to lay upon you no greater body than these necessary things. So we have certain things that are necessary, but others are not our burdens. He said, we are not going to bother you with anything else from the law of Moses, practices and customs, but we are going to give you this. Let's look at, look at it. He said, that you abstain from things offered to idols, idolatry, from blood, eating blood, from things strangled, animals that was killed by you know, strangulation, and from sexual morality. If you keep yourself from these things, you will do well. Fear well. Wow. See? He said, four things we should learn to keep today as church of those who are not Jews. We should keep ourselves from idolatry, worshiping idols. So if you, they are worshiping idols around you, gods and goddesses of the lands, you should not supposed to participate in it. You should avoid idolatry. And second, from blood. So we should not eat what is blood. We should not eat blood. And second, and third, we must not eat things that are strangled. And then fourth, we must abstain from all form of sexual immorality. Primarital sex, Extramarital affairs and all that adultery, fornication, lesbianism, homosexuality, all those kind of things. He said, as church people, now I'm not talking to the world, as church people, we that have come to Christ, we have come to know the Lord. He said, we should abstain from all form of sexual immorality and from idol worshiping and from blood and from things strangled. We must not eat them. Now, and he said, farewell. So let's read the next one. So, when they were sent off, they came to Antioch, and when they had gathered the multitude as the church together, they delivered the letter. When they had read it, they rejoiced over his encouragement. Praise the Lord. So we've seen that the first letter, I'd like you to go back and read it yourself. Take your time to go through this Act 15 yourself. I'm not making this up. That's the early church. All the apostles, 
all the elders, the church, gathered together. The Pharisees among them got up and they said, no, we're not going that way. We're not going to keep the law of Moses and get circumcised again. We're going to get to live under grace of Christ Jesus and we are purified by faith and we're going to abstain from these four things. Immorality, sexual immorality, from idolatry, and from eating blood and things strangled. If you do this, you will live well. Fear well. Thank you for listening. It's a wonderful time. God has already given us what to do. Of course, the other apostles spoke later, and they spe- I mean, Paul spoke about the law of Moses and not beyond the law, but under grace in Galatians and other sort of books too that he talked about. But 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 please note that the church. Is not under the law of Moses. We can learn from the law of Moses. We can reflect from the law of Moses. We can see it as a pattern, but we are not under subjection to the law of Moses. Thank you for listening, and have a wonderful day.